screen and drop this video because Tracy Wang from Artillery just announced that the Sidewire X2 will be released in 2021. Now back to myself. We already had a close look at how good the Sidewinder X1 is, especially for the price. But are there any upgrades you should consider? Make sure you are subscribed so you won't miss my upcoming scratch builds on the channel. Let's grab a beer and take a look at the upgrades that I would consider. While the stock print bed suits its purpose, there's a lot of room for improvements. And the cheapest way to get perfect and consistent bed adhesion is by using a PIA plate or some flex variant. So here's a quick view on how to install these sheets and of course I will provide a link in the description below. To promote the adhesion, you will need to sand the surface with a 250 grit or higher. Then give it a gentle wipe with some acetone or rubbing alcohol. And you're all done and set with the adhesion problems. Last time I said that the bed heated unevenly, but how bad is it? In order to test it, I took a thermal probe and a thermal paste and tested a few places. But it gets even worse on the spot where they put the tabs that connect the bed to the carriage. It acts like a heatsink. The temperature delta between the printer's thermistor and mine can be explained by the PIA sheet that acts like a barrier. So a 7 to 8 degree bump should fix that. If you really want to fix the poor heat dissipation, then an aluminium bed is your best option. Wobble or Z banding is introduced by high printing speeds with a tall gantry. As you can see it's getting very noticeable on the upper part of the build volume where the gantry isn't supported. Installing a Z brace fixes that problem. The small artifacts you can still see is a printed part that is still vibrating on the bed, which can be fixed by turning down print speed, jerk and acceleration. While the stock solution works for the most part, printing with bigger or different size spools can make you go crazy, as you have to slide the mount around on the rails. To compensate for that, you can print your own spool holder that can be found on Thingiverse. The Sidewinder has a few kinks that needs to be addressed. Strain release makes sure that the wired connection on the heated bed and your extruder ribbon cable don't crap out on you. Both models can be found on Tangiverse. The stock part cooling is good enough, but the shroud can do better. I suggest you print and try out some models from Tangiverse. As much as we like to heat up stuff, it's also important to keep parts cool like the PTFV lined heat break. To help it out, you can sand both the fin heatsink as the body with the 250 grit, finished with the 400 grit. You can see that both parts are hollow in the middle, without any thermal interface that will cause bad heat transfer. Put on some thermal paste before assembly and enjoy the free fitness it came with. I don't
As mentioned before, the Sidewinder X1 comes with PTFE lined heat brake, good for printing PLA and some PEGI, but after a few long and hot prints like the PEGI from Prusament, even the Capricorn PTFE will melt. That's where a full metal or in this case bimetal comes into the picture. Let's do some temperature testing. First, we have the PTFE lined heat brake, and we already see quite high temperatures at 200C. When I raise the temperature, you can see an almost linear scaling of the temperature at this point. This isn't even at the throat of the nozzle, so you can imagine what it will do to the PTFV that's pressed up in there. Next, we got the triangle lab by metal, and the results are stunning, with almost no rise of temperature even at 270C. Being honest, I had some troubles with under extrusion, cause the heat break is a bit too tight and I run too much retraction. But after adjusting retraction and giving the beginning of the filament a bit of oil, it's clear sailing after that. This heat break makes it even possible to run with a silent knock to off fan, if you want to silence your build even more. As a test, I pulled out the cooling fan. It looks like it would even be possible to run by G this way. Pretty crazy, right? Please note that your results may vary on this very subject. Never make promises, cause I don't keep the stock nozzle is good enough to do it all, and it's very cheap, but the Triangle Lab offers a big improvement in nozzle build quality, and it only costs around $2. So this will conclude the video, leave a comment below if you're thinking about buying a Sidewinder and what would you like to see on their new upcoming Sidewinder X2. Thank you for watching guys, give it a like if it was helpful, and I'll see you in the next one.